Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, and it's Weird Lamp Week at the lab. What we have here is a binnacle that's been made into a lamp. Now, a binnacle is a housing for a ship's compass. And we're speaking of a ship where the guy at the back with the big wheel or his hand on the tiller has to know what direction they're going, and it's pretty well exposed to the weather. Now we can pull it apart just by rotating it, getting the cover off of it. And this gives us a good view of the uh, compass. This uh, compass wheel is floating in fluid, which stabilizes it, and it's also able to stay level even with the rocking and the pitching of the ship. Now, this thing wasn't originally made to be a lamp. This particular design is from late 1800s, early 1900s, and uh, there's still plenty of them around. People are using them as mostly as decoration now. We have a patent number here, which is uh, 01151A, compass, which I believe that's actually a British patent number. Right here it says aft, which means you put that towards the back of the ship. And besides another nameplate right here with the same patent information on it, and uh, apparently maybe even a serial number, 10982W, um, that's all we get for this thing. I have to say, as conversions uh, of ordinary objects into lamps go, this is a fairly shoddy one. I mean, really. Blue masking tape on a splice inside of the pipe? I can't understand that kind of thing. Now, one feature common to all binnacles is this little cabinet on the side, which... Uh, They've installed a small nightlight bulb in because this originally would have held a candle, very similar to what we call a tea light today, and it would uh, cast a little bit of light down onto the compass so our intrepid sailor could see where he was going in the dark. Now, the work may be shoddy, but uh, the hardware is certainly high quality. This double cluster here is... Uh, Made in USA Leviton. And these end caps come off because the shells here are part of the whole piece. Now, as difficult as these are to get apart, they're pretty much just as difficult to get back together. see here this piece has gotten fairly hot and the only reason for that is because this screw has come loose which gives me a chance to talk about one of my favorite things which is why the ends of wires that go under screws should always be tinned tinned means soldered in other words you take all this little bundle of wires here and uh, Make it into one wire so that it goes underneath the screw and it clamps down tight. It's really not possible to get stranded wires under a screw nice and tight as it needs to be. The heating and the cooling, the heating and the cooling makes those wires spread out as they expand and contract and eventually they get loose and a loose connection gets hot and we have a wire right there. 
showing obvious signs of heat damage. Now this is what I mean by tinning. Just get the wire where it might wiggle around on me. Just a little bit of solder on the tip. Keeps those wires from fraying. And that's enough. Just like that. The other socket's even in worse shape because in addition to being heat damaged from improper wiring, they also pinched it, putting it back together. I don't know how someone didn't get uh, electrocuted with this lamp. Now for the same sermon I give with uh, every time I rewire a lamp on camera. We have our wires tinned. On every lamp cord, one side is smooth, one side has a ridge. Every lamp socket, one screw is silver, one screw is brass. And the ridged wire goes under the silver screw. Now the reason for that, the reason it makes a difference is because this wire right here goes directly to the shell on the outside. The other wire, the one that is smooth, goes to this brass colored screw. It goes to the terminal on the inside and through the switch first. Now, in the United States, all our plugs have one wide terminal and one narrow terminal. And that's so you can only stick them in the outlet one way. And that keeps these wires lined up on the correct screw. So that you won't electrocute yourself if you find a lamp that doesn't have a bulb in it. It's in the dark. You're reaching up here trying to turn it on. You stick your finger in the light socket. Not good. Now, to put this back together, we have a problem because the wires have to go through that hole right there on the side. So what we do, just simply cut a notch. Put a little bit of relief right there. Because that screw right there is going to be exposed. Got to get this in the right order, or it just will not work. And we do that on the other side, and we'll be almost finished with this lamp. Now I've got the uh, cluster all put together, the wire run down through the pipe. We could turn our attention to the uh, illumination for the compass. And it looks like what we've got here is more amateur work. I have to pull this out to change the bulb. So whatever I put in here has got to be easy to remove and easy to put back in. And more uh, amateur work. That's another reason that you want the tin wires is because the ones that are the loose strands like that always are loose. There you go. Just fell out. 
this probably could have come loose the next time someone tried to change the bulb and would hope that they had unplugged it before they tried to do that. When I first saw this lamp, I thought it was something out of a high-end designer catalog. Maybe something which you'd see in um, the old Sharper Image catalog. But uh, after tearing it down completely, I think this is just a amateur attempt. And kind of a dangerous one at that. Especially after seeing blue masking tape on the splice. This piece here with the uh, pull chain cluster was plainly taken out of another lamp. So when I put this together, I wanted to make it so that you didn't have to take it apart to change the light bulb. And to do that, I was able to scrounge up a bunch of stuff from my scrap drawer to get this socket down a little bit lower so that a person with uh, ordinary dexterity could reach in here and uh, change the bulb. Another bit of re-engineering will be having the junction inside the main body instead of inside the little night light housing. Small difference but certainly a better way to do it. lamp is complete, safe, won't burn the ship to the water line, won't get anybody killed, and uh, will make a nice addition to anybody's nautically motif man cave. So, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.